Isaac, thanks so much for doing this Q&A with me. I've got to tell you, it is so special for me as your older sister to be able to do this. And for me, I've gotten to see this entire personal and professional journey, and it makes me all the more proud just to see your success. And well, so- Thank you so much, sis. Thanks, thanks for doing this. Um, I, I asked you to please not call me your, your uh, baby brother. That was the only- qualification you agreed so here i am thank you <laughs> thank you for doing this <laughs> here we are what are some of the memories that you wrote down that made it onto the screen um i had i had big and small things um you know i remember when we first got to that farm uh that we didn't there wasn't a skirt on the trailer and we could see the wheels and i remember that was exciting and and i i remember there weren't steps and dad lifted us up into the trailer home he had to kind of throw uh, us in there yeah and it was fun for us and then we realized later that it wasn't so fun for mom <laughs> and I had to deal with that yeah because she literally didn't know i mean that was her first time she had no idea yeah yeah so, so there was that, and then I remember when we were walking through the fields that there were lots of snakes, and and so that kind of made it into the story also. Yeah. But if you remember, like um, even even the lunch pail that mom and dad take to work, like I, I made sure we find the exact same lunch pail because we would bring chickens back in them. Do you remember that? That scene where you introduce the Pentecostal farmhand Paul. I knew mm -hmm. right away who that was. And so uh, <laughs> other audiences find that character surprising, but I don't at all. So uh, talk a little bit about Paul. Um, his, his name was Clark and uh, he would take his cross out. He was every weekend and walk with the cross and he was Pentecostal. Um, and I, I felt like he showed our family a lot of love and he and dad became really good friends. Um, they, they'd even go out and wrestle. Do you remember that? To, yeah, to figure out who's... Yeah. yeah, they they had this competition of who's tougher between both of them. <laughs> I, I wanted to have Stephen Young and Will Patton do that, but I decided that'd be a little too hokey, so I didn't put that in the film. Uh, but it was an unlikely friendship, and and that's something that I always loved about that, and um, something that I kind of tune my eyes to these days. I love when I see unlikely counterintuitive friendships happening, because um, it speaks to something. Uh, deep about us as people, the, the potential we all have to, to make connections with people. Yeah. One of the people who would have been so proud of this movie is Hermony, our grandmother. Mm, yeah. Uh, and I was just thinking back and, you know, she was so young when she came to live with us. She was actually in she her was. early 50s when she came. And I remember the two of us going, she doesn't look like a Hermony because she looked so young when she arrived. Yeah. And she features prominently in this movie. And Isaac, how did she feature in your life? Uh, for her, she she was the one who really brought us a lot of, or me at least, brought a lot of the fun and joy <laughs> of, of life. And um, she was a parent who I could joke with and, and uh, kind of have more enjoyment in life. And um, she, she felt in many ways like a friend, um, just as much as she was like a loving parent. Um, so yeah, it, uh, that relationship that in the film, it's, it's deeply personal. And as I was making the film, there are many moments where it was unearthing emotions within me that I'd kind of buried. And, um, I, I was really surprised that I'd get so emotional on set as, as Yun Ya Jong, um, who doesn't look anything like grandma and, yeah. um, it, who doesn't really necessarily talk or act like her, um, there's something about the spirit of that, of, of grandmother that she was capturing and, and it would floor me. I mean, you talk about grandma bringing a lot of fun in our life and there are aspects in the movie which really are her. I mean, she loved watching wrestling. She loved it. <laughs> she loved it, it was on TV all the time. Yeah. Yeah, she really did pinch us with her toes. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> and she taught us how to swear and play hatu. Uh, that's true. And you know, at the time, I didn't realize I was learning a bunch of swear words in Korean. <laughs> <laughs> now we're not so naive, so it's a good thing. She's preparing us for life. I know. I learned later on. I wasn't <laughs> supposed to just use those words all the time. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs>
<laughs> but you know, it's it's remarkable to think that um, she left the community in Korea. She left. Uh, she had a store, so she she actually had a kind of a stable life that she was. She was able to be a business person. She was running a store with a fellow widow from the war. You know, she, her husband died in the war as a soldier um, when she was maybe 20 years old. So yeah. um, she, she just had a difficult life and she finally found a very stable life for herself. And, and then she sold the store just to come and take care of us because mom and dad had to work. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, I kind of think a lot about her in terms in terms of thinking about the sort of sacrifices that were made so that you and I could get to the place where we are now. Um, she made a huge sacrifice of her life and, and then mom and dad, of course, um, in the work that they were doing in the hatcheries, they were invisible too. They, they were kind of buried away and, and doing all this work for us. And, um, and then here we are and, and we look like big success stories. And in many ways, you know, we are, but um, it, it really comes due to a lot of sacrifices that were made on our behalf, behalf I feel. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, a lot of people talk about the American dream as if it's something that you gain for yourself. But I think for Harmony, for mom and dad, for them, the American dream was what you and I would be able to live out in our lives. Yeah, that's very true. So Isaac, when I was watching this movie, one of the things that I was so struck by is that the lead actress, Hanyeri, she looks so much like mom at that time. And <laughs> I would watch these scenes and it was so eerie. And yeah. I remember an interview that I saw where she said, this character, Monica, that she portrayed, she's the person who loves the most in this film. And she just loves deeply and she carries the burdens and the dreams of the family. Um, and I just loved this character. Can you talk a bit about her? Yeah, um, I, I felt as though um, she was basically going to have to carry the whole weight of the family throughout the whole film. That, that was my idea for this character. Well, you have to have been a child of immigrants to understand this woman because um, a lot of us who have gone through this as, as children of immigrants, we see that it's our moms who are carrying really the weight of the burden of the family, of keeping the family alive and together and, and uh, the needs of children, uh, that it's the moms who, who are making sure that the needs of the children are being met. And I felt like that was uh, true for mom, that uh, yeah. Um, yeah. She, she was so strong. And I, I, I just felt like we have to find somebody who's very strong uh, for this role. So when, when I met Yeti, of course, I, I noticed she looks a lot like mom, but it was, it was more than that. It was her inner strength that, that really um, stood out to me. She represents mom, she represents immigrant moms. And in many ways, I feel like she represents Valerie, my wife. Like I, I feel like um, anytime someone's pursuing a dream in a crazy way, it's, it's often, uh, somebody at home who has to like pick up the pieces and carry a lot of weight um, to, to let that be possible. Um, so in a way, I wanted to honor Valerie um, with this role as well. Let's talk about the father character in this movie, Jacob. Um, because people know that this is loosely based on our childhoods, they assume mm -hmm. that this character is based on dad. And there are parts of it when I watch this where I think, yeah, this is based on dad. But then there are other parts of it when I watch this, I think it's based on you. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? <laughs> I, it's, a, it's a mixture of both, to be honest. Um, I, I felt early on that I didn't want to try to make a character who is mirroring dad exactly. Cause I thought that would be more offensive in a way for dad to, to see. Um, so I, I thought from the very beginning, he's not going to be our dad, but he's going to be Jacob Yee, which is a whole different character. He's a new movie character. And once I had that in mind, um, I, I started to invest a lot more of my own personal um, elements into him so that it wasn't just things that we remember from dad, um, of dad. I mean, a, a lot of that is there. He was a hard, dad was a hard worker. He was really chasing a dream uh, of starting this farm. 
Um, he, he was a chicken sexer and obviously he was overqualified for that. And, and there was some angst about that. Um, so, so there were some elements there, um, but I don't know. There, there are elements of Jacob in his own wrestling with family, with spirit, with his spiritual wrestling, with um, uh, just his his failings as a father and as a husband. Um, that it, those were areas in which, as a filmmaker, as an artist, um, I, I'm just trying to wrestle with my own things and, and trying to proclaim in, in a way what what I'd rather be, what what I hope to become as a man. I don't want anyone to watch this and think that that is our dad, but um, I hope that it does strike at some type of shared humanity, humanity that I have with dad and that um, everybody has with each other. I mean, when I watch Steven Yeun in the movie, like him driving the tractor, he looks like this larger than life character. And I do think that in some ways dad was that in our childhood. He was, he was a real cowboy. <laughs> Vin, my husband, your brother-in-law, wants to ask you a question. Um, he auditioned for a role in Minari <laughs> and he didn't get it. <laughs> he rejected. <laughs> uh, that, that role, he was gonna be the chicken hatchery manager. And, you know, he would have to come out and introduce Monica and Jacob Yee. And I thought about Ben in that role as I was watching the edition, and he's too good looking. He, <laughs> he would have taken away too much from Steven Yun in that moment. And, you know, Steven Yun's our star. So I, I decided we got to find, we got to find this other guy. <laughs> I, I have words for you. I just want to thank you for this. I want to thank you for doing this screening. Um, and for going on this journey with me, sis, it really means a lot. So this is the most special q and I've done. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for this. And um, I, hope, I hope your friends and loved ones and community over there, I hope they enjoy the film. And um, honestly, you're the successful one in our family. And uh, you're, you're the one who, um, to me, is a superstar. So I, yeah, I'm so glad that... Uh, that you arranged this and I hope everyone enjoys it. Well, I will tell you that mom, dad, and I are so proud. Uh, in fact, the whole Chung family is proud. We've been doing a lot of Zooms, watching all your award ceremonies, and it's just been a really special time for all of us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.